sometimes in life, like you have to take, you know, a leap of faith and uh, do what you feels right. Do do what feels right to do. And uh, the yeshiva that I went to was the best decision that I made in my life that has helped me grow as a person, spiritually, emotionally, and uh, you know, and I'm just the happiest I've ever been in my life. I'm from Toledo, Ohio. I went to GW in Washington, D.C. and I studied Middle East Studies and International Affairs. Um, and I am going to solve the Arab-Israeli conflict. Short-term goal. I was born in the Republic of Georgia, but came to the United States with my family when I was eight. I went to school in Washington, D.C. for college, and then uh, to Egypt, and then to Israel, uh, where I studied in Yeshiva, and then back in, in the States, where I then worked in venture capital and now I'm in New York City running a business network. I was born in New York City. I came to Israel for the first time a year and a half ago and I've been here more or less ever since, just traveling for work sometimes. I'm a concert pianist, a vocal coach for opera singers, a performance coach for actors and a dialect coach. I remember very rarely having any sort of interaction with other Jewish people. In, in any sort of Jewish way. I mean, they existed and I existed and that was the end of it. Um, my life was completely devoted to my academic and especially my professional pursuits as a classical musician, as a pianist. I was on a birthright trip five, six years ago. I'm walking in the Shuk in Tel Aviv and one of my favorite songs comes on by Pink Floyd. And it's coming out of this this guy's little booth where he's selling candy and all his stuff. This old man at the counter is singing this Pink Floyd song, so I go over to him and I start singing to it. All you touch and all you see is all your life will ever be. So I, I go over to this old guy and we're singing together and I'm just like, this is my country. I went to grad school, I was at Georgetown, and I was doing my master's in international relations. And uh, thankfully, I got an internship at the State Department. And from an internship, um, thank God I helped turn that into a job. I grew up subscribing to the typical, as I see it, the typical American Jewish narrative. It was very much a cultural thing. We know we're Jews, and that's the extent of it. I first came to Israel when I was 15 years old. I lived on a kibbutz for a half a year on a high school abroad program. Eventually I came back after high school for a year. Then I had to go to college, but I needed to come back and learn more about being Jewish because it was just a, an incredible experience. Jewish. I knew I was Jewish. I just I didn't know what that meant, but I knew that's what I was. That's what our family was. Uh, I, I knew the ideas, but it wasn't wasn't brought down and integrated into who I was. I wasn't living these ideas. You come to Israel and you're in this this like environment of people who are just all about growing and learning and and living the best life and just being good people. Just being good people. You become a better person. They bring you up. I didn't know anything about Judaism growing up. I didn't know anything about my culture. My my religion, and what better place to learn about it than Israel. Anyway, I met a lot of people who had grown up religious, and they were all like living alternative lifestyles. And I thought, I want to live an alternative lifestyle because these guys are cool. So I came back to college and I, I immediately started studying Asian philosophy. I was doing Buddhism and Taoism for a while. Um, I lived in LA up until I was 17 years old and then I went to a uh, university. I majored in civil engineering. I then went to graduate school and studied construction management and then decided to study in seminary for about a year. I went to all non-Jewish schools. I went to a Christian school. I, I was one of, one of the apostles in Jesus Christ Superstar. Spiritually, like I was very, very distant from Judaism. I, I wasn't turned on by Judaism at all. In fact, I was more into uh, like alternative religions, like yoga, Buddhism, meditation. I was, I was, I would do like you know uh, weekly retreats of yoga, and I still love the alternative, esoteric uh, things of life. And I really had no idea that Judaism had any of that kind of uh, side to it. And I asked myself, if I'm so open-minded about everything else, uh, I was very left-wing, I was very open-minded about everything. I was like, if I'm so open-minded about everything, 
Maybe I should be at least a little bit open-minded about my own, uh, my own background, my own roots, my own religion. Um, grew up connected to a conservative synagogue, not because we believed in conservative Judaism per se, but, but only because we weren't Orthodox. Um, I'm from London originally. This is my house. This is my Pilates and yoga studio. And uh, I teach the Pilates and I have yoga teachers coming in and they run classes here. I feel like I have a fantastic network of people and I enjoy life. I enjoy day to day. It's very colourful, it's very exciting, it's very alive. I could never imagine just going back to England and just being one of the masses. Uh, I started learning a little bit in college, uh, but then uh, went to Israel uh, on a trip. Uh, a few days, what was it, 10 days I believe, where as part of the trip we uh, visited yeshiva and um, interestingly enough the rabbi sat me down and says, you know, would you be open to coming here? And summarily I said, no, I just spent, this was really towards the end of my college, I spent four years learning theory, the last thing I want to do is study more theory and so I said, thanks but no thanks. And he was very respectful of that, he said, no, I appreciate that answer and that was the end of it, but I was so impressed by the level of students um, that were taking a break from whatever it is that they were doing to go to yeshiva, to learn about their heritage, to learn about, you know, in depth what the Bible really states uh, about, you know, Tanakh and all those sort of Jewish um, books and texts that we hear about, but we don't really know. Basically, I ended up really enjoying the learning. And I think that for a lot of people, they might get scared. Oh, am I going to become religious? Oh, am I going to spend so much time there? We're, we always have the choice to leave. You know, you always have the choice to be, you know what, I'm here, I tried it and I don't like it and I'm going back. But I think at least having the opportunity to try it is, is amazing. Yeah, I think learning, it's, it's the core of our being. I mean, we have to grow, we have to continue to learn. So I think we should, we can focus on ourselves in terms of understanding where we came from and who we are the same time how we relate to you know the greater world you know i really wanted to to be intellectually honest with myself and give myself a, a year of studying in israel of learning about judaism and studying where i came from and figuring out where i want to be and how i want to move forward in my life it's been a wonderful experience i've been here for nine months so far and it's been one of the best experiences of my entire life. I've grown so much as a person. I've learned so much. Um, my Hebrew has improved a lot, not only because I'm in Israel, but also because I'm reading in Hebrew and translating from uh, the original texts. And it's actually really comforting because you grow up um, kind of learning all these things by hearsay and then to spend the time actually learning, looking at the original sources has really been a great source of inspiration to me. It's been uh, it's been a wonderful experience. When I started learning yeshiva, like I was like, this stuff is incredible. Like it's it's very very spiritual. It really applies to me. I connected with it in so many levels, and it, it taught me so much about who I am and about about God and about everything about everything. All these people were taking a break to really go and figure that out and really take a, some time off to really set their values straight and really understand what they want to get out of life, what kind of family they want to build. And I saw that seriousness and I saw that uh, focus that each and every one of those students had at the yeshiva and it stopped me for a moment. I said, wait a second, there's something different about this place. Uh, there's a certain focus and a certain uh, appreciation for life that you don't necessarily get in a typical college setting. So I then sort of started researching the place a little bit more. I talked to some of the rabbis and really I was impressed all around. And I thought, you know, you know, the old adage of if not now, when? I figured now would be a good time to really check it out, to uh, see if it's something that I want to be a part of in terms of the learning experience. Uh, and so I went and really it was a wonderful experience. I'm a very visual learner, so my brain works like a puzzle. Things kind of fit into place, and if um, something doesn't make sense, like you kind of like try to stick it in there, like like jam it in as best as you can. Like you play with those big puzzles, you can't figure out where the pieces go. So I, when I first came to Israel, I felt like I was missing like half the puzzle. Like I had like the border, but the entire center was missing. Um, and then when I started slowly, slowly learning, like. 
things started to become clear. I saw a bigger picture and I saw things going on that I never knew. Again, in terms of the uniqueness of this community, you have this feeling that at any given time there will be someone there to help you with whatever it is you need, whether it's an idea, whether it's a question, whether it's something physical. My parents, they, they didn't want me to go. No, like, listen, it, it would be like, if you want to learn this, go ahead. But they knew if I went, it would, I would stay. This is what they said. They said, if you come for three months, you're going to come for a year. And you'll never come back. Which is not true, but that's what they, that's, that was their fear. I'm going to do things that are different from the way my family does them. They're worried that they're going to lose their baby, they're going to lose their, uh, you know, their son or their daughter, or their brother, or their uncle, whatever it is. They're going to lose them. I'm learning, uh, I'm working on myself, I'm growing here. Why would I cut that short? Why would I, uh, I could be a, a half complete person and, and I go home and be a very nice guy and have a nice little Jewish life or I can go home after two years and be a complete person and at least complete enough to, to go on my own. Making the decision to take some time to do this and really invest. The same reasoning was what brought me to Europe after grad school because I was playing all this music that was composed in France and composed in Italy and composed in Austria and Germany and you can't really delve into those topics without being there. So I went and spent time. I was seeing the same buildings that they saw and were inspired by. So that's my reasoning for having made the decision to take a little time and learn here. Sometimes it's hard being in Shiva and not working, especially when I have a bunch of friends who are doing pretty externally impressive things. One of my close friends is in dental school. I have two friends in med school. It's hard like on the esteem to like think like, I'm not working, I have to learn. But like, first of all, it's like, okay, people go at different paces. Like some people have like need to go learn and like want to go learn. And the other thing was it was these people, like these people who impress me, who I look up to, who made me afraid to be here for longer. Like I knew I had to be doing this, but I was like embarrassed cause I, cause I, because I assumed that like at least some of my friends were like looking down on me. They were thinking like my mom and my friends are always like, what are you running from? When are you going to stop running? I'm not running from the real world, that you would call it. I'm running to my real world. Professionally, there's always the concern that taking some time off sets you behind uh, and it kind of sets you back a little bit. Uh, but sort of my experience, I mean, looking back on it, I realized it wasn't the case. Um, people appreciate somebody who kind of stands out for the, the crowd. So I was planning on staying in D.C. and working in the foreign policy world. Then I sort of decided I wanted to come to Israel. And that was an argument with my parents. They wanted me to get a job. And I was like, well, there's no time like the present to pause and sort of take time to figure myself out and figure out what's important to me and what I want in life and who I am. The last uh, two and a half years I was going to seminary and for a year and a half I was doing college and I also got some amazing news that I got accepted to Harvard's Masters of Education program. It's a Masters of Education in Human Development and Psychology. I think sort of the overarching goal here is just to become the best human being, right? Two years of just focus on personal development um, to really, I think really the idea is to calibrate the mind and the heart. What's one year in the grand scheme of life? Like when you're 60, you're gonna look back and remember, oh, remember when I was 22, 23, I went to Israel for the year. It's, it's almost too good to be true. In the yeshiva that I was at, you had people coming in from Argentina, Chile, Africa, uh, Europe, British, Britain, Britain, and all these different places. And you know, you have this mix of everybody and everybody's unique in their own way. 
and but everyone is on the track of becoming a better person. They all want that and you're just around really good people and it's very inspiring and I think it's an experiential thing. It's it's any words that I could put on it really does limit it and we all have this common history together and you know, we're a family. We should try things and if it doesn't work, we at least know and we move on and I think it's really an important um, I think opportunity to really get to, to check things out. You know, the truth of the matter is, is that I stayed longer because I thought I was getting a lot out of it. And I really enjoyed the learning. And it was, it was really such a gift to be able to spend one year that you're just learning about yourself. I think it's very powerful and very important to understand what it means to learn in Israel, what it means to be able to come to Israel, what it means to be able to stand in Jerusalem and access things we weren't able to access for th literally thousands of years. For me, the yeshiva experience was positive. Uh, I wouldn't say it's for everybody, just because um, it's a really unique experience. Uh, it's really an intense experience. Uh, for me, it was a very positive experience. But if somebody decides, you know, I want to do this just because of social pressure or peer pressure or because they have nothing else going on for the moment, I would truly discourage them because it's an opportunity of a lifetime, but you have to approach it the right way. You really have to see it as an opportunity and you have to approach it in a way that enables you to really get the most out of it and then leave Yeshiva better equipped for the world. Yeah, it's a very unique community, a very unique group of people. Nobody judges anyone at all. People at all different religious levels. We dress different ways. We keep different amounts of like halachot and um, we all come from different backgrounds. Some are married, some are not. And yet there's this feeling of like unity amongst people and acceptance. And like, I feel, I feel like within this community, no matter what I became, they would still accept me. Part of the amazing thing about being there is just being around people who are passionate about being good and being better and honoring their authentic selves. If you come here and learn, it's your experience and it's only your experience and you have to remember that so you can come here and you can learn and you can still be you. For me, the primary reason why I wanted to be in Israel is because I thought this was the best environment to learn. It really solidified what I knew about myself and it's almost like rediscovering everything you already knew. Don't be scared. Give it a shot, C come here and try it out. Like me personally, like it was the best decision that I made in my life. It's given me a lot, I've met so many wonderful people. It's been spiritually uh, fulfilling and uh, just been amazing. Some of my best friends saying that I seem happier than I've ever been. I seem more myself than I've ever been. I've just become a better person and, and those were are, are all in line with the goals that I had originally. We're always growing, we're always moving, we're always learning. The reality of what learning in Israel is like is different from what one might suspect from far away. There's something in the air, there's something here. It's more than just a history, it's more than just a, a culture. Like when I was in the Shuk and I was singing Pink Floyd, all you touch and all you see is all your life will ever be. I just don't believe that anymore. Your life is so much more than all you touch and all you see. Mm -hmm.